When Godzilla was released in 1998, it was by far that year's most anticipated movie, and although critics disregarded it for the lack of fiery breath and radioactive roar, the film proved to be a commercial success. But Godzilla was left bereft of its trademark attributes not because of unintentional mistakes, but because Tristar had intended to create a trilogy around Godzilla, and much of his powers were going to be revealed in the later films. In early 1999, Tristar hired Tab Murphy to write a treatment script for Godzilla 2, which was finished in October 1999, but the film went into a production hell, and Tristar lost its rights to Godzilla in 2003, leading to the film being axed. Nevertheless, the treatment script of Godzilla 2 was breathtakingly rich, and had several elements that inspired future films like the 2014 reboot and the 2019 film Godzilla, King of Monsters. But don't despair, we will deep dive into the entire literature of Godzilla 2 and take you through a thrilling ride down memory lane. But before we begin, please consider subscribing to us, it may be a small click from you, but it goes a long way for us. Let's begin, shall we? The mighty Godzilla is finally dead. While most of Manhattan remains in utter ruins, several companies of soldiers continue to scour Godzilla's underground lair. Days continue to pass, and the army keeps looking for either unhatched Godzilla eggs or baby Zillas. Nick Titopoulos is invited to head the team of global scientists, who were dissecting the carcass of the super species, but feeling distraught and guilty over his role in the death of such an intelligent life form, Nick makes a brusque exit and heads to Manhattan's underground, clinging to the faint hope of finding a babyzilla. And, to his surprise, he does find a weakened and starving offspring of Godzilla. He tends to the creature while avoiding its claws and jaws, but gradually, the two of them develop a bond filled with mutual respect and trust, so much so that the babyzilla starts considering Nick as its mother. But it wasn't before long that Nick heard voices of soldiers and beams of flashlights approaching him and the little creature. Nick knew in that moment that the soldiers would shoot on sight his adoptive beast, lest he did something about it. Naturally, he lured the creature to the waterfront, with fish as bait. The situation was similar to that of Arya Stark's when her dire wolf Nymeria was to be executed. Babyzilla didn't want to leave his apparent mother's side, and Nick had to show some tough love to push the young beast into the water, after which a heartbroken Babyzilla leapt into the depths of the cold ocean, with its own heart carrying a sea of mixed emotions. Act 1. Two years after the incident, strange, inexplicable things begin to plague the world. While an Indonesian jumbo jet was found slashed in half, entire villages in Fiji were found abandoned and destroyed. Naturally, a global task force was formed to investigate these events, and leading the mission was General Hicks from the previous film. Meanwhile, a mysterious, giant egg is discovered in a New England town, but by the time General Hicks' men reach the spot, the town is found desecrated, and its inhabitants disappeared. General Hicks issues an APB to find Nick, who was finally getting married to Audrey in Vermont. However, when Nick gets inside the waiting limo, the vehicle's doors get locked as the vehicle speeds away, leaving the bride in shock. It turns out that Nick's abductor was the Frenchman Philip Roach, and was working with General Hicks, who believed that the strange global catastrophes were the work of Godzilla. However, Nick believed otherwise because of the various inconsistencies. Based on the proximity of the events, Nick deduces that the only landmass big enough to house Godzilla without detection would be Australia. They head to the land down under and meet the beautiful, but hard-headed biologist Anna Charlton, who was apparently researching Australian dingoes. However, Nick and Philip knew better than that. Later, Nick and Philip trail the biologist, but their vehicle breaks down in the middle of nowhere. While arguing, the two men hear the familiar, gut-curling roar, and before long, they were face to face with the mighty Godzilla. Nick realized that it was the baby Zilla he had freed two years ago, but to his surprise, the little monstrosity didn't just grow exponentially, but had also mothered a brood, who were in their adolescence. 
For a giant creature known for being utterly violent, the Godzilla was unusually loving towards its offspring, especially the runt of the litter, the weakest and smallest of all the young Zillas. When a few dingoes attacked the runt, Mamazilla roared and ran to protect the runt, but the chaos spooked the others, creating a stampede-like situation. Nick and Philip happened to be in the way of this stampede, but were saved by Anna, who arrived in her jeep, and they barely managed to stay out of harm's way as she maneuvered her jeep through the dense jungles. Act 2. Barely escaping with his life, Philip reaches out to the radio to inform General Hicks, but Nick tries to reason with him. However, Anna shoots the radio down and tells the men that she knew about the Godzilla for some time now and was striving to protect the creature and its children at all costs. Although Nick tried to convince her that he wanted to save Godzilla, she only saw him as the person responsible for the last Godzilla's death. Naturally, he revealed to Philip's utter shock and horror that he had saved a babyzilla two years ago, and it was the same Godzilla that was now loose in Australia. Nick tries his best to change Philip's mind about informing General Hicks about the discovery, but doesn't succeed. In a last-ditch attempt, Nick drives the jeep to the towering 40-story tall Godzilla, and the gargantuan beast gave a roar that shattered all windows of the jeep. Godzilla raises one of its feet to crush Nick down, but stops suddenly, realizing that something was familiar about this little human being. The Godzilla recognized its so-called mother and became lovesick once again, nuzzling Nick with love and affection, and thereby proving that Godzilla was essentially harmless and docile. Meanwhile, another strange egg was discovered in Sydney, Australia, and General Hicks had started mobilizing his troops to Down Under. Nevertheless, the script intended to have a few amusing scenes by depicting Godzilla being totally in love with Nick, so much so that it would follow Nick everywhere, and even try to sleep beside him. And of course, wherever Mamazilla went, the young Zillas were sure to follow. Anna begins to trust Nick, and Philip realizes that Godzilla may be the beginning of a new natural order and that the giant creature might have a place in the world after all. The trio learned that Godzilla was not responsible for the recent catastrophic events, and they decided to visit Monster Island, the birthplace of the original Godzilla, which was under heavy protection, and no visitors were allowed. They managed to sneak into the island and discovered a wide range of new and mutated species, most of which were beyond recognition. Not before long, they witnessed a swarm of mutated Buick-sized insectoids who were carrying human prey. One by one, these humans were killed and soon, the gigantic insectoid queen emerged. It became apparent to the trio that she was the one behind the attacks on humans. But more than that, they realized that Godzilla and its brood were the only natural predators of these insectoids. To make things worse, they learned that Philip had already informed Hicks about Godzilla's location, and although Nick feels betrayed, they all rush back to stop General Hicks in time. However, they were too late, General Hicks and his troops had once again slaughtered young Zillas. Only Godzilla and the runt managed to escape. Philip realized that General Hicks may have just doomed the world by killing the Zillas. Act 3. Back in Sydney, the authorities had built a massive greenhouse-like enclosure around the egg, so that scientists could study it under a controlled environment. Furthermore, they had surrounded the enclosure with heavy artillery, in case things went out of hand when the egg hatched. Nick and the others arrive at the scene, and he soon realizes that the egg was placed in Sydney by the Queen, who wished to spread her deadly offsprings worldwide. It wasn't before long that the Queen made its presence known, but fortunately for everyone, Godzilla and its runt weren't far behind. The two titans fought each other in a high-octane battle, and we are sure it wouldn't have been anything lesser than the battle between King Ghidorah and Godzilla from the 2019 film. At one point, it seemed that Queen would be Godzilla's end because she stung and paralyzed him. But, Godzilla soon recovered from the attack and showed the Queen who the King was. However, a swarm of flying insectoids attacks Godzilla, 
turning the tide of the battle. But Godzilla breathes his atomic fire breath, desecrating everything in the vicinity. Meanwhile, the Queen had abducted Anna and Nick, Philip and Hicks went after her. They found a large group of devoured humans, and several insectoid guards were protecting those who were yet to be eaten. Although Nick and Philip destroyed the creatures with incinerators and grenades, the Queen appeared, and she would have killed them, had it not been for Godzilla, who arrived just in time to slay the monstrous beast. Meanwhile, Nick and Philip escorted the survivors to safety. Although Godzilla emerged victorious, this time around, he was heavily wounded and weakened from the battle. To make things worse, General Hicks' heavily armed troops arrived at Ground Zero, and the general was about to give the orders to put Godzilla down, but the survivors surrounded him from all sides in order to protect their gargantuan savior. General Hicks realized that killing Godzilla would be a disastrous mistake. Naturally, he ordered his troops to stand down. The script was written beautifully, and bore huge resemblances with the original story arcs, much like Toho had intended. Also, it introduced Godzilla fighting other super species, something that heavily inspired the future Godzilla movies. Apart from that, Godzilla 2's script was equal parts funny, exciting, and thrilling. It's a shame that the script was never turned into a film. Let us know what you thought about this video and if we should explore more such unmade scripts. Stay safe and have a good one.